All right, so if Joe Mixon comes back this week, are you going to play him? I, I mean, I, I guess so. I, I don't know. I, well, I just said I'm not playing Freeman. If, if, the, if the Bengals deem him healthy enough to play, I mean, even when he was in there with that banged up knee yeah. coming into that, he, he was, still looking, was, he was still looking pretty good. The, the Bengals aren't in a terrible situation, so I don't know why they would rush this, him back. And, and Big Co alluded to that at, off air. So I, I guess I, I don't know. Here, 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 I, feel, I feel like the Bengals are three and one. And Giovanni's been good enough to help them out. Obviously, the Falcons' defense was bad enough to give them the game. Um, if yes, if the Bengals say that that Mixon's healthy enough to play for them, I think then you start him because I don't think he. I don't think they play him if he's not ready. I don't think that they're three and one. Don't necess- not that they don't need him, but Gio's been great. And I don't think they bring him back unless he's solid. He's to me feels different than Devontae Freeman. And I think it, it, it wouldn't surprise like me at all is, if they didn't play him another week. Right. It feels like Devontae Freeman's injury was like almost carried over from year to the, year the previous season. Yeah, because he because he opted not to have surgery. Right. And the first time he everything's cool in the preseason when you're not really doing anything. Everything's cool when Greg Olson's foot's okay. And then he goes out there and he play and he's playing against real competition. And you're in between and it matters. As soon as it matters, you do right. things a little bit higher level. And as soon as it mattered, Devontae Freeman knee got bust up. I, I think. If you, I just struggle because Geo's been pretty good in this offense. This offense has been pretty good, and and even if Mixon does get the start, maybe maybe they they mix a, a lot more Geo in to just ease him back in. So I struggle I a little bit with the Mixon, even though like uh, when the first question gets posed to me, I'm like, yeah, play Mixon. Right. No, I see that argument about Geo was good enough to come in, and a lot of people are trying to. I I, I would imagine that the argument's going going to go around a fair amount this week about how Geo was so good and he needs to stay relevant, which he wasn't when Mixon was right. in there. Right. It's the same Geo, and then yeah. when he was there, it's like they don't when, know that what happened last year. Right. That he crushed it down the stretch. When Mixon was healthy, Geo Geo was irrelevant and didn't even look like Gio right. for whatever reason. Now he's been unhealthy and Gio's been good. So it's just this, quite the quandary. Well, they're at home against the Dolphins who just got shellacked and they they might have their manhood tested because they were 3-0, and feeling good. And, and then, you know, it was a division rivalry. The Patriots beat them up like the, you know, little tiny brother. But maybe the Dolphins come back over here and try to stand up. But I think the Bengals got it rolling. And if they say he's ready to play, I, I wouldn't mind playing him. Yeah, uh, I, it wouldn't I surprise I me if they – I don't think they need to play him to beat the Dolphins at home. I agree, but that the back. I, I agree. The, if he's if he's if they say if they deem him ready, I guess I guess I guess I would be okay with playing Mixon. I think there's enough PPR floor to boost him up enough to feel fairly confident with him. And I mean, he looked like one of the better backs in the league when he was out there. He was truck sticking people. I mean, he's he's quick and patient, powerful, elusive. He's got so, it all, and he sure. can, he's a catch. Which I, this is which is why like you're you're having a good season. I'm not sure why you would want to rush this guy back. Completely agree. And you don't have a defense. Completely unnecessary to bring him back early. I mean, I think that he did get that injury midway through the the last game that he played, and they had him finish the game out. Right. And well, he, they, he that, looked fine. It didn't look like he was hurt because he left the first half of the knee injury. It's not like a, it wasn't a sprain this or a sprain that. It's something. Well, I'm not a doctor, but they, but they just went in to take a little bone fragment. And it's something, a little chip of something. And they were saying, uh, my boy Sigmund Bloom's podcast had the doctor came on there and said he equated it to like having a rock in your shoe. If you're running down the road and that rock gets right up underneath your uh, the ball of your foot, it's going to bother you. You take your shoe off and you knock it out. But if that rock kind of finds its way in the corner, it doesn't bother you. So that's kind of yeah one of those things. You don't need four weeks to recover after you knock that rock out of there, though. But right. Well, like Casey said, though they don't. This is this is the this is the the future of their offense in the backfield is Mixon. He's come in and done everything he needed to do. We, you know, had the talent to go a lot higher in the draft, and all the problems that happened with him in college that fell only down to the second round because he's that good. Mm-hmm. And the Bengals needed him and took that chance. And I completely agree with Casey. I don't think they should play him unless he's a hundred percent. That's why if they do play him, I would imagine that. The Cincinnati Bengals know enough to say if he's good, he's good. All right. I like that. I like that uh, logic, solid logic. Uh, let's wrap this up. We got one more guy just to name drop here. Uh, Robert, the gun show turban, mm. is also coming back from PED suspension. His pipes are ready to roll. If somebody needs a ru- what's the status of Marlon Mack? He's just still limited and... 
He was limited all last week. Didn't and play. He was inactive. Yeah. He's limited to start this week. You don't really know. I mean, I'm not excited about picking up Turbin and plugging him, per se, but I mean... No, but... <coughs> I would definitely be looking at picking him up. Right. If you no, could, if you uh, got the space. 100%. I mean, this is, this is an offense that doesn't have any sort of running back identity right now. They, they forced Mac again. Like, right. They, they did the opposite of what we think the Bengals should do or the Falcons should do. They forced Mac back for no reason. He was out within a half of that game exactly. that he came back. He had had a couple of good runs in that game, but just wasn't right. Like, he's an explosive guy. The hamstring has to be explosion. right. Right. Um, so I, I think if, if, if Turbin is out there, I think he's the best running back they got on the roster. Like other than Hines catching the ball, for sure. I mean, that, and that's what Hines do it does, and I don't think they're making any mistake about any of that. Uh, this is what he's doing. This is what he's gonna do. This is what they brought him in to do. This is what I saw this offense being. This is what uh, they drafted him to do. This is what Frank Wright wants to do with a player like Naheem Hines. Right. right. So I, Casey I, predicted this. He brought it up in our rookie mock it up before he fuck it up when he finally took when we took Naheem Hines in the second round. He broke all this down. And now they're they're down uh, one more like Ty is out. And, yeah, right. And they lost Kane. And now so like he's just Jack Doyle's hurt. And he's he's just kind of filling in in, right. in spots here. No. So Turbin's going to come in there and take Wilkins' first carry, like the first carry of the game last week. Wilkins was in there gets the first carry. That's going to be Turbin this week, I think. But for me, I would rather not play Turbin. No, it, I mean, yeah, I didn't it, say it any would have of that to be to an Turbin. It would be an emergency for me to need to plug in Turbin. Sure, but everything else in that in that running back rotation gets watered down except for Nain Hines as a pass catcher. Right. Okay. And I think, you know, I don't want to play Turbin in any stretch of the imagination. I think he's a nice guy to to, to scoop up because they don't have anybody else, and I don't think he looked solid in the preseason. Yeah, he did, and those pipes always look solid. Oh yeah, nobody pipes wants to get the great. gun show. Nobody wants to get in front of that. Mm-mm. But I mean, I just Jordan Wilkins is not the guy. I don't think he's the answer. I said it hasn't in, been yet. He's he's a jack. <laughs> hasn't for, been the for guy. Lack yet. of a better term, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Casey hates that That's word. It's ridiculous. But I just I don't he. To me, when we were talking about it in the offseason, when you're playing with that third and fourth string, he wasn't showing enough life to be like, oh, this guy's really interesting. That's what he's you not, said. He's that not is exactly than, what you he's said. He's not that much better than than these guys to be like, oh, when it's time for the big boys to be playing, that I'm super interested in this guy. Right. I was able to just, by a stretch of a miracle, flip him for a third. Some idiot <laughs> took, <laughs> took that trade. I sent it to the entire league. So, you know, great guy just i was gonna drop him yeah you did i didn't send him for a fourth that was a great i was like great trade away somebody might be interested in great trade away um picked up flacco this week played him in a one quarterback league because i had to (laughs) crushed it flacco's elite again (laughs) but (laughs) there was someone at the beach house we were watching that game from out on the porch and it was a, a new friend that i met from through a roommate and uh well there was actually two different people that came through and the first guy was like, is Flacco elite? He just asked that question <laughs> randomly. And I just started bugging out because I was like, Flacco's elite again? <laughs> and I had to explain like why it was an inside joke. Well, that was Ian from Revelry. He he leaves, and one of Sean's friends' friends comes over, and so he's real into the game. We're kind of watching the game together while everybody's chit-chatting. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, Flacco does something good. I'm like, Flacco's elite again? And he's like, no, he's not. And I'm like, <laughs> right? He gets pissed about it almost. Like, he's very already thought about this, had this conversation before. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, he's he's balling out and read him off some numbers. He's like, he's not. He's not elite. He's not. <laughs> he's had that conversation he's not. before. And I was like, okay. All right, buddy. I'm not so, going to argue so with you he's, anymore. He's a fan of somebody in the NFC he's AFC a North. He's a Pats fan. So I guess uh, they hate well, the Ravens. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. there's one person he's elite against, it's the Pats. Right, right. right. Hates the Ravens. <laughs> He's so, not. He's I, not. I was just joking because I was thinking that the other guy I was having this conversation <laughs> with was still there, and I just brought it up again. And this guy didn't know anything about that prior conversation. He was just like, he's not. Let's he, get no. Let's get purple and white hats printed right. from China that say <laughs> "Make Flacco, Flacco elite. elite again." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not to take away from the turban and the gun show, somebody that should definitely be on your radar. Scoop them up. I think they got a, a shady situation at the running back position, and it can't hurt. Can't hurt to have them on your roster. I, I agree. I've been uh, if you are a Patreon member, every week we've been putting up a list of uh, waiver wire additions. He's been on there pretty much every week, just near the bottom. But you need to watch out for him. 
It's not in a necessarily particular order, but <laughs> yes. Just uh, just be... They have a particular set of skills. Star them up. All right, well, that'll do it for today's free show. We got a bunch more stuff to get to, but we're going to have to ship on over to Patreon. We have meet, reached our time quota. As they so say. thanks for listening, everyone. If you're on any of the platforms of choice, hit the subscribe button, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Please go on to iTunes and, and hit that five-star review button for us. That'll greatly help us out. We really appreciate it. And then if, you, if you're if you a listener of the podcast or if, you, if you're on YouTube or not, we'd really appreciate a YouTube subscription. Um, it's just another way to get a bunch of our content. It's a little more granular. We break, it up, break this podcast up and, and spit it out there so you get more of a, a specific search for your pleasure. We're also going live on Sunday. You can jump in uh, to that live chat and get your questions answered about who you should be sitting and starting. So be on the lookout for that. Be sure to hit that little alarm button to get all notifications from YouTube. Sure. And then, you know, if you're looking for extra content, if you like what you heard and you want to get... You want to get your questions answered in depth. You want to get a little more physical, <laughs> physical. Well, we haven't gotten any, we haven't gotten really physical on Patreon, but I mean. In an internet a, sense. There's a perk that maybe we could be adding, that <laughs> something about some physicality, like Funchess running his routes. Get us and, out of here, Jason. <laughs> just go over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty. Give us that $5 holler. Get all your questions answered. Get another hour plus of content every single week and you can go back and listen to all those different shows they're all on there um and just join the fam we look forward to seeing you till next time you've been listening to the ff dynasties married to the game <laughs>